once every year, typically at the end of the year, around this time of the year. Your C-level executives uh, have uh, a meeting where they are creating budgets for next year. Uh, your closest C-level executive is typically the CTO or the CIO as a software developer. If your uh, CTO is given a budget of uh, $250,000 for the year of 2025, then that's the total amount of money he can spend on salaries, on IT infrastructure, uh, traveling, etc. If your uh, CTO spends uh, $150,000 on IT infrastructure, such as AWS or Azure or uh, servers, that means he's only got $100,000 left to pay salaries. If your CTO spends $50,000 on the same thing, same things, he can spend $200,000 on salaries. This is basic math. You see, the amount of um, cloud services your CTO pays for and the amount of salary expenses he has are two internally competing budgets. So the higher one go, purely logically, the lower the other one has to go, and vice versa. Once you realize this and understand this, you realize that uh, you are in competition with cloud service costs, implying you have a personal financial incentive towards reducing your employer's cloud services. In order to make it likely that your employer has the financial maneuverability to increase uh, your salary, you need to analyze what your employer is uh, spending money on. So you, you should contact your CTO and ask him, how much does this server cost? How much does Cosmos DB cost? How much are we paying for Dynamo DB per month, etc., etc. Once you realize these numbers, once you realize how much your employer is paying for cloud services, you can start uh, creating better architectural decisions. I used to work for a company where we spent $8,000 a month on Cosmos DB for our development environment. Obviously, this implies that if I could reduce those costs, then my employer would release money that my employer could use to increase salaries for his developers in that same team. Because individual teams also have budgets, typically, in larger and more complex organizations. Now, if you watch my YouTube videos, you will see me go through all of um, our best practices. I'm basically destroying them one by one by one. Such as, for instance, uh, stating how teamwork is um, typically not a good thing and that having one single software developer implement the entirety of a single project is normally a better thing than start out with the big team. Uh, how, you know, CI, CD and, you know, Scrum and Agile and all of these processes we are using on a daily basis as we are developing uh, software is uh, for the most part completely useless, resulting in that, you know, you don't need a program manager, you don't need a Scrum manager, you don't need DevOps, etc., etc. Now, all of these 
IDs that I am giving you because at the end of the day they're not really anything more than IDs that I'm throwing out or like you know hey here's an ID but all of these IDs combined release us significant amounts of money from your CTO's budget Allowing, at the very least in theory, your CTO to easily increase your salary by 400% and still use less money on IT and software development in total. Now, for instance, my own personal project, Magic Cloud, okay, it comes with a cost of $298 per month. However, with Magic Cloud, you can arguably replace Cosmos DB, Dynamo DB, 15 different, you know, Lambda functions, you know, 80 virtual servers, etc., etc. Not because of that I'm giving you that much of hardware resources, but simply because of the simplicity that Magic Cloud implies reduces the cognitive complexity of your applications down to the point where you are extracting more value out of every single CPU cycle from your hardware. You see, complexity has a price. It has a price in CPU cycles. It has a price in salary costs. It has a price in, in uh, IT infrastructure costs, etc. When you reduce complexity, you reduce that cost, which releases monetary funds within the organization where you're working, allowing the leader of your organization to give you more salary. It's really that simple.